can we have victory over sin? The answer is yes. It's not a straightforward path. However, it is very much possible. Amen. And Jesus talks to his disciples and he brings up this remark. He says, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. So pray at all times that you don't enter into temptation. In other words, he exposes the moral vulnerability of us human beings. He says we are vulnerable to falling in a pattern, in a fleshly pattern, in a sinful pattern that is contrary to our true natures. And so he says, because of that, you have to be engaged with God at all times. Amen. And you see what I'm saying? Because the flesh realm, our flesh has, flesh has a mind of its own. Okay? Just like our spirit has a mind, our soul has a mind, flesh has its own mind. And, um, you know, in the book of Psalms, David says, in sin did my mother conceive me. Right. And so the reason for the inclinations of the flesh is twofold. Okay. One is generational. In other words, you might not be responsible for it. You might wonder, why am I having this inclination towards uh, drugs or inclination towards women or inclination towards gossip? You might wonder why. That's because the Bible clearly talks about the generational transference of sin in itself. Right. And he also goes on to say, uh, I was shapen uh, in iniquity and in sin did my... In other words, there's a shaping aspect too, meaning the influences that we have around us. Right. So it might so some of the sins might not be generational. It could be shaped by the influence that's around us. So there are two ways, right? So either way, whether you inherited the sinful nature from generational uh, impacts or from your society or from your community or from your schools, wherever it might be. Either way, the flesh has a mind of its own because of all this programming done to it. You know, it really sounds like if the flesh and the spirit both have their own minds, that they're really clashing with one another. Correct. You remember the verse from Galatians 5 where it says, the flesh and the spirit are opposing each other. There's That's a right. conflict going on in every human being, right? This is why Jesus said, your spirit is willing. In other words, we all know that we are spirits made in the image of God. We want to live a righteous life. We want to lead a righteous life. But then there's the flesh part of us, the body, the vessel that we uh, carry around. That has uh, been contaminated by the original sin. There's so many inclinations and propensities that wants to uh, go the opposite direction. So there's literally a battle going on within me. That's between it. my flesh a conflict. and my new Holy Spirit. New Holy Spirit. As you really learn how to live spirit forward, that's how you're going to get consistent victory over sin and temptations. Amen. Yes. I want it. Yes, you. everybody wants it. Like I said, it's a long-term journey. It's a long haul because the renewal of the mind and the, cho- the deliberate choices you will make will decide your uh, future uh, when it comes to victory over sin and overcoming temptations. Uh, as I mentioned in a pre- previous broadcast, Michael, you know, we take one day at a time, okay? In other words, you might have had a good run yesterday, but tomorrow is a brand new day, right? That's right. So many people, <laughs> many people, you know, including me, you say if I had a week worth of just clean living and clean eating or whatever your uh, areas that you're trying to improve, It doesn't guarantee my next week is going to be clean. So is that what the Apostle Paul meant when he said, I die daily? I die daily. Meaning this is a daily battle. This is a daily choice that you make. That's why I like that phrase, one day at a time, uh, where we have to, from the time you wake up, you make, you renew your mind and make that, make those right choices for that day. Just your past history or past programming doesn't guarantee you a future success. So the Bible says that every day I need to bring my flesh to death. Absolutely. That's why Apostle Paul clearly says, if you mortify or put to death the deeds of the flesh by the Spirit, you will live. Wow. (laughs) That's what we want. Absolutely. But, But listen, the thing is, is that that may sound overwhelming, especially if you're entrenched in sin. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing, because God promised it, if you try to make the right choices, the power will be there for you to do it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, when as you mentioned, it might be overwhelming for people, but as I this is God is not expecting you to be uh, clean right in one day's time. He's given you a whole life to get this right, okay? But the key is you got to be actively choosing or uh, 
taking making the right choices daily uh, as much as you can. Okay, so our goal is to what do you call it? Uh, continuous improvement. Continuous improvement. We are not looking for perfection, but we are looking for progress. That's right. Okay, so that should be our attitude. Hey, I want to make progress, not looking at perfection at this time, because our original core or our original nature is what one is one of righteousness. We are righteous beings. We are people made in the image of God. Right. And so, we are now retraining ourselves to live in our original nature. That's right. Sin is contrary to our nature. Sin is not who we are, actually. And so when you, if you find yourself in sin today, know that that is not you. It's your flesh, which has been programmed. That's why flesh one day will give away. You will, you, through death, the flesh will go back to dust. Okay? That's right. Flesh is not redeemed. Only part of us that is redeemed is what? The spirit part. The spirit part. And so today, as we come to the Lord, as we get regenerated, born again, we start this journey of retraining our whole system to obey the spirit, Amen. Uh, our original natures. Okay? And, you know, when we believed in Jesus, God puts the Holy Spirit to some measure inside of us, and then it's like we've got a—we're a whole new different person. Yeah, it's not just some measure. He's given the seed of the Holy Spirit that if you allow it to grow, it'll eventually take over your whole being. Amen. It's Actually, Jesus said if the kingdom of God is like a seed. In other words, seed, when it looks first, what is it? It's a tiny thing. Tiny. But what happens in 10 years to that? Uh, it could be a whole forest. It's a whole forest or right. a big tree, right? In other words, the Holy Spirit that's in you, if you allow it, it'll take over and bring you to the fullness in Christ Jesus. The potential to overcome all of our sins lies within every believer. Absolutely. It's a, and it's it's all about you you watering it, you allowing it the environment for it to grow. We need to walk in it. We need to walk in it. So... There are two ways uh, you get over, uh, you get victory over sin, right? Um, one of the ways is, let me put it this way, uh, de- uh, prayer and deliverance ministries. Right, right. Because uh, I've seen people, including me, they've been. We, I've got delivered from certain areas through prayers. Me too. And that's been instantaneous deliverance, right? It could be smoking or eating too much or drinking. It's not a one size fits all approach. Right. For everybody, it's unique. But I've had instances where there are some weaknesses, some uh, addictions, some of those sins can be broken off instantly. But doesn't mean everything will be cleaned out either. God, it's God in His infinite wisdom, allows a certain part of us to be cleansed. Right. Okay. And whereas some of them would require our cooperation, our long-term involvement in getting cl- in getting it cleaned up. Well, I would. I mean, absolutely, it does. E- even the instantaneous miracle healings yes. require you to choose every day, yes. not to go back. That's right. So, um, and some of the sins are, as we were discussing earlier in in our drive here, some of the sins are uh, evil spirit induced. Right. Okay. Not all sins are because of your fallen nature of the flesh. Some are evil spirit induced. In other words, when people pray or when people you know do deliverance ministry, these spirits get out of your system, and you suddenly feel the freedom. You don't feel that inclination to sin anymore. That's one layer to it. The second layer is where your flesh needs to be retrained. That's okay? right. You were used to smoking or you were used to drugs. Now, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to renew your mind and subdue it step by step. So, you know, Galatians 5 says, walk in the Spirit and you yes. will not gratify the desires of the flesh. flesh. Yeah. I, I would How do re- you do that? I would, I would rephrase it, walk in the Spirit-forward mindset. Right. Meaning, you got to remind yourself that you're a spirit. Right. Your identity is in God. As you walk in that renewed mindset that you are not an ordinary person, you are an offspring of God, and it's low, it's actually in, it's actually a bad thing, or what do you call it, way beyond your realm to, to step into sin. You right. almost look at it with uh, abomination, Yeah. with hatred. You're like, man, that is not my nature. I'm not an animal. I am a son of God. I need to step up my game. I need to walk like God. And the more I walk in the Spirit, the farther I get away from my flesh. Absolutely. The more you walk in that mindset. That's right. So this is why, you know, Paul clearly uh, emphasizes on renewing your mind in the Word of God daily, because you have, we have to remind ourselves of this or else we forget who we are. This is why there's this active involvement of viewers involved. I love the concept, Junu, that we're talking about this has to happen daily. Daily, and so, so from a solutions perspective, Jesus had the answer to this. Right. So if you go back to Matthew twenty six, he says, "Can uh, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak? 
Then he goes on to say, so pray so that you don't enter into temptation. Right. And if you look at the whole whole verse on, I think it is 2641, where he, if you look at this whole thing, he starts off, it says, can you not tarry with me at least one hour? And I, I, when I studied it, I recognized the minimum requirement. He's not putting a law or the rule, but if you want to have a spirit-forward posture maintained, you got to have at least, a, in the 24-hour day, at least one hour set apart for prayer. That would be amazing. Because anything less than that is you setting up yourself for a, re, a relapse or falling back. You know, what do you call the right word for falling back? I forget. Reward Backs, back. Backsliding. Backsliding. Yeah. So Jesus, that's what happened to the disciples. And he asked, can you not tarry with me for at least one hour? Wow. And then he goes on to say, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. So one hour out of a 24-hour day have to be engaged in prayer. And I would even take it to another level, praying in the spirit. That it, would be amazing. It's key because that's kind of the dynamo. When you start to pray in the spirit and engage with God for one hour, your spirit man is so ready to move, uh, set forward. It's actually your spirit man is set forward for the rest of the day. Rest of the day. And then you yeah. can, then again, it's, you reset and start back again the next day, but at least one hour a day. You know, God will also give us power to persevere through this. Yes. It may sound very difficult, what we're talking about, mm -hmm. but it's also so much fun to choose God. Yeah. And uh, the second element I want to bring to uh, from a solution perspective, in addition to prayer, of at least one hour. The second element is um, disciplining your mind and your tongue. I'll, I'll explain to you what that means. Right. The Greek word for flesh, there are two words, bazaar and sarkikos. Right. Okay? Bazaar has to do with all sorts of immoralities. Okay. B -b -b bazaar means a, really a jacked up flesh. Right. Uh, Galatians 5 talks about what are some of the deeds of the flesh, do you remember? Oh, sexual immorality, witchcraft, right. sorcery, enmity, jealousy. strife, jealousy. And the list goes on, meaning stuff that we've done. Obvious, obvious Meaning sin. this is the easy inclinations right. of the flesh, right? Right. So this is the bizarre part of our flesh. <laughs> right. Where we just want to go completely away from our true nature. Right. And do all this junk. Right. And then the second word for flesh is archikos, which means, uh, you know, from the word sarcasm comes from, the, it talks about an undisciplined mind and an undisciplined tongue. Wow. Because the mind and tongue are interrelated too, because uh, the Bible says, out of the heart's fullness, the mouth speaks. Right. So he says, if you, you have to learn to discipline both your mind and your tongue. If you can do that, you're going to have a rule over your flesh. You're going to be able to subdue your flesh. And so these two elements have to go hand in hand as you subdue those fleshly propensities that you just mentioned from Galatians in the spirit and also to discipline your mind. You know, none of us uh, want discipline because of the fleshly propensity, but we have to learn by the spirit forward posture to discipline both mind and tongue.